Hi, welcome to this brand new series about lenses for the Fujifilm X cameras. Today we're going to talk about the Grandpa lens, the oldest lens of them all, the XF 35mm 1.4. So, as a full-time photographer, I often get questions about what lenses do you use, what do you use them for, why do you choose one lens over another. Uh, so I decided to make this series to maybe give some, you know, give you some the viewers some hints and advice on choosing lenses and what I use them for and what do I love about them and what do I well, not love about them. Um, and I, 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 I wanted to start with this lens, the first lens Fujifilm ever made. Uh, I called it the Grandpa lens, and it's not not just because it's the oldest lens in the X-series lineup, uh, but also because, like many grandpas, this lens is not the fastest. Uh, and it uh, can be a bit grumpy too, like many grandpas, um, especially when it comes to nailing autofocus. Um, but it has gotten a lot better over the years with firmer upgrades for both the cameras and the lenses. Uh, but even though it's, uh, it's uh, you know, grumpy old it, uh, it's a lens with a beautiful character, and I'm not talking about the, you know, the look of the lens. I'm talking about the look of the images, because, you know, the thing this lens does to the colors and the contrast and the... Uh, it's, it's also a pretty sharp lens, and the way it renders uh, areas in front of your subject and behind your subject out of focus, it's beautiful. So it's, it's, it's a lens that gives you a, a nice look to your files, I think so, at least. So I often grab this lens, and it's always with me in my camera bag, always. And when I go to, you know, on holidays and stuff like that, it's often the only lens I have uh, with me. Uh, I, I take an X-T2 or an uh, X-Pro2 or something, and I put this lens on, and I, you know, don't spend any time at holiday wondering what lens do I choose. I have this lens, and that's the one I use. Um, and many people ask me, well, professionally, what do you use it for? And I use it for pretty much anything, I would say. Uh, it's uh, For me, it's a storytelling lens, so whenever I want to include some of the you know, the environment around the subject, I grab for this lens. Um, and like with portraits, for instance, uh, and uh, you're going to see some images in this uh, series as well. We can start with this one, uh, uh, an image of uh, a portrait of the head of the Norwegian Central Bank, Mr. Øystein Olsen, in his, uh, you know, their offices, and I wanted to include some of the environment, uh, and I thought, well, this is a typical XF35 uh, setting for me. Or well, this one here, I shoot a lot of lifestyle work as well, and uh, like here we did a series in a rock club in Trondheim, and I, you know, when I entered the place, I immediately, you know, the first thing uh, that crossed my mind was, oh, this is a 35, or maybe wider, but the 35, it did wonders in there, and I love these images. I also use it for a lot of my fashion stuff, um, for, the, for the same reason, because uh, often I, I like to have a little bit of environment around and tell try to tell a slight story about the not not just the the clothing but also give it a setting to to breathe in uh, so fashion stuff is also one of my main areas with the, this lens uh, and also architecture and industrial work i do those subjects for my clients as well and uh, i mean it's it's so easy to go around with a small camera and a small lens and you know you you can deliver what your uh, clients uh, need you know and uh, i know this can handle most things you, you throw at it and it gives you those like i said images with a slight character to the to them so it's uh, it's um, it's a great lens i love it i love it a lot uh, if they were to make an update of it fujifilm um, uh, I hope they give it even more of that character, you know, uh, take all that mm, that ooh, that goodness in the lens that's mm, already there and just, you know, multiply it by 10, you know, give it a give it a lens that that's not just, you know, brilliant, but make it magical, make it a legend. Uh, so I hope a uh, successor to this lens, if it, you know, if it will ever come out, will be um, maybe even better than 1.4. But uh, you know, you know, keep the goodness and enhance it. That's my advice if Fujifilm are listening. Um, 
there are a couple of things I don't like about this lens. It's not the it's not, I don't dislike it, the, those things the, so much that I don't use the lens, on the contrary. But uh, the, the focusing ring and the aperture rings are way too loose, you know. It's, it's very easy to bump the aperture out of, if, if I've set it to, to 1.4 or whatever, it's very easy to bump, bump it out of position. So I wish they made this uh, like uh, some of the more recent lenses, that's more, you know, you know, it's kind of like more precise, you know, the clicks are more, it takes a little more, a bit more to, to bump it out of position. Um, and the, uh, for those who's paranoid enough to use, want to use lens, uh, lens caps, uh, the lens hood can be a bit of a pain in the, yeah, uh, because if you, if you ever happen to get the, fiddle the, the lens cap into this place, at least you're going to be sure you're not, you're not going to lose that lens cap because now you, you kind of like it's almost impossible to get it out again if you manage to get it in there. But it's no big deal. I don't use I don't use lens caps, so uh, throw it away. But you know, it's fiddly, but it looks good, and that's the important thing, right? Okay. Well, I think that sums up my you know immediate thoughts about this lens. I hope you like this series. I hope you. will Come back for the next video. Not sure what lens I'm gonna do next time, but maybe the 56 millimeter. Um, and I hope you're gonna tune in again and hear me, you know, blabber about that lens. So until next uh, next time, have a nice day. Bye.